MoneyWeb at Midday for all your up-to-date stories. Expat Web is the largest independent work permit and immigration provider in South Africa and overnight has released its annual critical skills survey shedding light on the current state of skilled labor in this country. Now, as South Africa continues to navigate a complex economic landscape, these insights from the survey would be crucial for understanding the needs and the future strategies of employers in an increasingly competitive global market. Marissa Jacobs is the MD of Expad Web and joins me now. And Marissa, first of all, then, uh, let's get some context here. What does the survey actually set out to do? Yes, so the annual critical skills survey that we do is really feedback from large corporates and multinationals in South Africa asking the question, what skills do business find most difficult to recruit currently? Which are the skills that they, when they go out to market, they find it hard to find and they find themselves more often needing to expand their recruitment efforts internationally to be able to find those skills. And then based on that feedback, we are able to, in the survey, get down to a top 10 list of which are the most difficult skills to recruit in South Africa. And we do love a list on this program, Marissa. (laughs) So what specific skills then are currently in highest demand in this country? So top two in the list, as it always is, this is the fifth edition of the survey, and I was just looking through the data over the last five editions, and number one, again, is engineering. 23% of respondents say that they find it most difficult to find engineering skills, and number two is ICT skills. Um, I think ICT is no surprise with the world of AI and technology and how we're using it more and more. That skill is becoming more and more sought after and and more and more scarce to find and and every year it's between those two that we compete for the top two spots and then other skills that we also see on the list is artisans foreign language speakers especially with call centers that use foreign language skills and then C-suite executives. We still see a high demand for C-suite executives. And I think especially as we see businesses expand globally, they look for those C-suite executives with global experience to be able to take uh, their businesses um, into Africa and beyond. Also interesting to see that uh, healthcare professionals are important, science professionals and uh, media and marketing specialists. So uh, for some of us, uh, Marissa, I guess there's a bit of hope, yeah? Absolutely, yeah. And, and and I think it's important also to note that this survey is focused on South Africa, but if you look at this, the demand for skills globally, you can very easily, when you look at this list and you ask the UK, Australia, Europe, what are the skills that they find most difficult to recruit, you will see a similar list um, and which makes it even more important for for South Africa to really have an attractive offering and ease of bringing talent in because we're competing globally for these skills. It's interesting when you look at engineering, for instance, and if you go back over the past five reports, um, it came in, in t- at 2018 at 14% and then steadily increased increased up to 23% in uh, in uh, in in the 2023-24 report which also tells me that we're not doing enough to attract skills like that in South Africa yeah, absolutely. And I also think it goes both ways. I think we lose a lot of our engineering skills that go abroad. Um, we see a lot of engineers in the UAE, a lot of engineers going through to Europe. So so while we struggle to bring in, at the same time, we're losing our own local skills, which just increases that demand. And, and as you say, we've seen it going up and up year by year. What challenges then do companies face when trying to attract skilled professionals into South Africa, and particularly in the space in which you operate, in other words, the documentation, the permission in order for a person Mm. to come into this country and work? Sometimes it's very difficult, isn't Mm. it? Yes, it can be very difficult. And I I think over the past few years, South Africa has had a particularly difficult time in terms of the Department of Home Affairs, a a increasing backlog and increasing inconsistencies, making it very difficult for business to bring skills into the country and to collect the documentation and get visas processed. So it's been extremely difficult. I think in the past 
I would say in the past year, we've seen some improvement. We've seen the introduction of the Trusted Employer Scheme that's been extremely successful. And then, of course, with the appointment of the new minister, um, there's been a lot of positive sentiment around the ability to attract skills to South Africa, the improvements that we're hoping to see in the short term. And I think business is extremely positive about this. We had a conference yesterday where both Home Affairs and business spoke and you could feel the sentiment in the room is definitely turning where people are starting to feel hopeful and that there's really a new tide. As far as uh, bringing people into South Africa is concerned, you've referenced the Trusted Hmm. Employer Scheme. You also have the whole issue about employment for families of critical Hmm. skills work visa holders in South Africa. Both of those systems now, again, talking to the point of streamlining, are based on a points Hmm. system. Is that working optimally? So the Trusted Employer Scheme is definitely, it's probably the best initiative that we've seen out of the Department of Home Affairs in the last 10, 15 years. It really looks to provide a streamlined process for large employers who are used to bringing skills in and who are familiar with home affairs processes. Of course, the Department of Home Affairs still signs off on the final visa being issued, but there's a, a streamlined and a smoother process for trusted employers. If we look at the um, at the ability for, for spouses to work in South Africa, that is something that still hasn't come through. We, we've seen the introduction of the remote work visa, which we are seeing businesses look to, to give that work ability to the spouses of talent that they're bringing in. But interestingly, it's the first time in the survey that we asked employers, do you find that your skilled talent that you bring in have a need for their spouses to also have work authorization? And 96% of business said yes, they believe that spouses should be granted automatic access to work. So I think that's 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 powerful data that's coming from the South African business market. Does Expat Web, your company, have any recommendations then for policymakers to support the development and retention of critical skills in the country? In other words, uh, Marissa Jacobs, what still needs to be done uh, in order to smooth and facilitate the process? I think first and foremost is the clearing of the backlog. It's very hard to be excited about new systems and new processes when we have real life applicants who've been waiting two years for a visa to be issued. So I think first and foremost, the backlog needs to be cleared. We can see that it's top of the agenda for the Department of Home Affairs. And I think only once that has been done, can we really start looking at at more initiatives. Um, The critical skills list is being updated more regularly. We know that the department is working on it now. This survey will will serve as valuable input for that. And I think a a legislation that is more agile to adjust to those skills as we start seeing skills developing um, the need for skills and for different skills developing quicker um, yeah, so I think those are my 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 mm. headline inputs. And you also make the point about a younger cohort stepping into these critical skills role or the critical skills role in South Africa. And that's also predicated on something called the digital nomad visa, uh, which is becoming more mm. and more important. In other words, for people to operate in the country, uh, but there's also a tax burden on them, but they also need to be able to move very, very quickly. I'm wondering whether we're keeping pace with that particular trend. So that is still brand new for us in South Africa. The the remote work visa was only launched about a month ago. I don't. Uh, I think the first the first uh, batch will only be issued probably in the coming months, and we'll see how that unfolds. But it's definitely been something that that South Africa has been lobbying for a long time to ask for this introduction of the remote work visa. And we're very excited to start seeing the data roll out after the first six months or so, where there's really an anticipation that it's going to to grow the economy as we attract these digital nomads to work in the country the same way that places like Portugal and Greece and mm. and the like have done. Marissa Jacobs is the managing director of X Pat Webb. Thank you very much.